okay welcome back to the lectures on transform calculus and in the last lecture we were discussing about the integral representation of a function and then we arrived at uh, uh, cosine and sine uh, Fourier transform so we'll continue uh, from that point so let me just recall again what we had in the last lecture so we started with this Fourier integral representation and so a function f can be represented and here the function is, is not periodic by this integral 1 over pi 0 to infinity minus infinity root plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x d u d alpha. So, this was in the last lecture and we can also write this in this form that f x can be represented by the, the same function, but we have introduced this a alpha and this b alpha and this a alpha 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos alpha u d u and b alpha is 1 over pi minus infinity to plus infinity f u sin alpha u d alpha. And then we have seen that for uh, an even function, so when the function is even, so we have uh, this even times this odd. So, this integral over this symmetric interval uh, will go to 0. So, B alpha will be 0 and we have simple uh, this uh, sign uh, in Fourier sign integral representation. So, that is and in fact this A alpha also we can just write 2 times uh, of this 0 to infinity. So, what we have at the end that this f x is, is 2 over pi and 0 to infinity and then from here again 0 to infinity and f u cos alpha u d u and this cos alpha x d alpha. So, this was for the even function and I, I uh, put here equality. So, I assume that this integral is absolutely integrable and all other conditions are satisfied. So, that we have uh, exactly equality here or in a more general case we can replace this by the average value. So, and then we have uh, defined the Fourier cosine and Fourier sine transform. So, exactly at this point. So, what we take uh, the factor square root 2 over pi and 0 to infinity f u cos alpha u d u and we uh, since this is a function of uh, now alpha we are integrating over u. So, we call it this f and c for the cosine and uh, hat this alpha or we also write in this operator form that this f c that is the a Fourier cosine transform of f will be given by this function and then this f x would be with this notation 2 over pi uh, again this is square root 2 over pi left here and then we have 0 to infinity and this f hat. So, we are here so f hat uh, c alpha and then this cos alpha x d x. And this is our f x and this we simply call that the inverse Fourier cosine transform. So, f c inverse uh, of this f uh, c hat alpha. So, this is the inverse Fourier cosine transform and similarly for the odd function. So, if we take f to be an odd function then uh, we have the Fourier sine transform of f x. So, this is the notation for the Fourier sine transform and we denote this uh, integral by f s hat alpha and this integral is uh, as we can see again because for this odd function this is going to be 0 this is odd and uh, this is even. So, we have here the, the odd um, integrand. So, this uh, integral will be 0 and we have only this b alpha so, then we can define this uh, as we have done for the cosine and this is the uh, Fourier sine inverse which is square root 2 over pi and this f s alpha sine alpha x d alpha. So, this is inverse Fourier tra sine transform and this is Fourier sine transform. So, we ended up uh, the last lecture at this point and now we will continue with uh, just one example and then go for the Fourier transform. So, let us uh, go for one example here. So, find the Fourier sine transform of E minus x 
x positive and then show that that the integral 0 to infinity x sin m x over 1 plus x square d x is pi e minus m over 2 m positive. So, now we go with the definition of this Fourier sine transform. So, e minus x square root 2 over pi 0 to infinity we have e minus x that is the function and sine transform then sin alpha x d x. So, we can evaluate this integral. So, let us assume this is i. So, we have i 0 to infinity e minus x sin alpha x d x we integrate by parts. So, this the integral here we have minus e minus x and sin alpha x 0 infinity and then minus 0 infinity again with this minus e minus x and sin will give cos alpha x into alpha d x. So, here when x approaches to infinity this will be 0 and when x approaches to 0 this sin alpha x will be 0. So, here we do not have any term. Now, we have this uh, minus minus plus. So, we have alpha and then again we integrate. So, minus e minus x and this cos alpha x again limit 0 to infinity minus 0 to infinity e minus x and then we have this minus sin alpha x again on alpha d x. Okay, so, here when uh, x approaches to infinity this will be 0 and the of course, this is bounded. So, uh, this whole will go to 0 and when x to 1 then we have here 1. So, we will get this 1. So, 1 the minus minus will be plus. So, here we have again this minus and alpha and this sin e bomb e power minus x and sin alpha x e power minus x sin alpha x that is i. So, we have this or now this i we can take uh, to the left hand side. So, what we have i this implies i plus alpha square i alpha square i and then we have uh, is equal to alpha. So, this implies that i is alpha over 1 plus alpha square. So, now, so we have this i and, and, uh, and we uh, got this f sign a uh, transform of this uh, e power minus x. So, square root 2 over pi and then we will replace with this i. So, we have basically f s e minus x for a sign transform of exponential minus x 2 over pi alpha over 1 plus alpha square. And now, we take inverse Fourier trans sign transform inverse Fourier sign transform. So, we will get e minus x and that was our f x. So, the first part is over the second we are going to get this integral 0 to infinity x sin m x over 1 plus x square d x. So, for that we take the inverse for, uh, sign transform and this is square root uh, 2 over pi and 0 to infinity and we have f s e minus x sin alpha x uh, d alpha for x positive. So, this is uh, what we got already 2 over pi 0 to infinity f s uh, e minus x uh, is, is square root 2 over pi and alpha over 1 plus alpha square we have uh, this sin alpha 
x d alpha for x positive and now we change x to m to get this so we change this x to m just to have a different uh, name here so we will get this uh, pi by 2 it can take to the left hand side so pi by 2 e power minus m x is changed to m so what we have now here 0 to infinity and alpha or 1 plus alpha square and sine uh, alpha m d alpha. So, this we got the value of this integral. Okay, so, we now proceed to uh, define Fourier transform. So, for that we will again start with this Fourier integral that is the, the fundamental concept we have. So, we got uh, this Fourier integral and that was this f x is 1 over pi 0 to infinity and minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x d u. Okay, now, we note that this integral minus infinity plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x d u is uh, a even function of alpha because if we change this alpha by minus alpha this integral will remain uh, the same. So, what we have then what we can write in this case. So, uh, let me write down. So, note that this integral minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x uh, d u is n. So, what we have d u and then d alpha. Okay. So, we get this f x here is an even function of alpha then this f x what we can write it is uh, we will uh, take this 1 over uh, 2 here pi and this instead of 0 to infinity we will put minus infinity to plus infinity because this integrand for this integral. So, uh, our this integrand minus infinity to plus infinity f u cos alpha u minus x d u is uh, an even function. So, here we have straight away the 2 times 0 to infinity and this 2 will cancel and we will get uh, that integral. So, that is the trick and also what we can have if we consider this integral 1 over 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity and again minus infinity to plus infinity f u is similar, but with the sine sin alpha u minus x d u d alpha and now in this case this is an odd uh, function of alpha or function of alpha and in that case since this is odd so minus infinity plus infinity will give us 0. So, this is just simply 0. So, we have second equation now what we do we equation first and i uh, multiply to the equation 2 to have the complex form of this Fourier integral simply. So, what we will get in this case now the f x is 1 over <coughs> 1 over 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity this is common again minus infinity to plus infinity this second integral is common and we have f u. So, cos alpha u minus x and plus i sin alpha u minus x. So, that again in exponential term we can write. So, f u and e i alpha and u minus x d u d alpha and this is called this is called 
complex form of Fourier integral Fourier integral. So, in this complex form or just we rewrite now this to define Fourier transform and Fourier inverse transform minus infinity to plus infinity and minus infinity to plus infinity again f u e i alpha u d u that is one integral and then we left here e minus i alpha x and d alpha. So, if we let now this together with uh, the factor 1 over square root 2 pi. So, let f hat alpha 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity and f u e i alpha u d u then this f x will be again the same factor 2 pi and square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity and this f hat alpha e minus i alpha x d alpha and this is called the first one here is called Fourier transform Fourier transform of f x and this is here is called inverse Fourier transform inverse Fourier transform of f hat alpha of this. And there are different versions uh, available for this Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform because what we could have done here instead of this adding plus i and the multiply to equation 2 we could have subtracted here with minus then we will get here minus and uh, here we will get minus and then we will get here plus. So, that would be another version of this Fourier and inverse Fourier transform. The another point that uh, we have taken this 1 over square root 2 pi uh, this this factor uh, 1 over square root 2 pi and then the other factor 1 over square root pi to have same prefactor here in the both cases. But what we can also do that we can take either with this Fourier transform the complete factor 1 over 2 pi or with the inverse Fourier transform. So, that is a possible. So, what we also denote here uh, as uh, in case of the sine and cosine transform that this we will call this Fourier of this f with big F and in this case we will say Fourier inverse of this uh, f hat alpha. So, that is the notation we will be using for the Fourier and inverse Fourier transform. So, now uh, we have introduced this Fourier transform and inverse Fourier transform and we will go for some important properties of the Fourier transform now. So, properties first as usual we have linear property and in this case if the Fourier transform of f plus b j is a Fourier transform of the function f plus b Fourier transform. So, Fourier transform of the function g x and f x we can put here f x g x. So, this is no need to prove it is just coming due to that linear property of the integral. The second one we have the shift property and in this case the Fourier transform of f x minus a is e i alpha a and Fourier transform of f x. So, if we go to the proof, we take the Fourier transform of f x minus a as 1 over a square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity, we take this f x minus a. So, f x minus a e i alpha x d x. So, 1 over a square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity if we just substitute here 
substitute x minus a new variable t the limits will uh, remain minus infinity plus infinity, but here we have f t now and e i alpha for x we have a plus t d t and this e i alpha a we can take out of the integral that is the constant with t. So, 2 pi and then minus infinity to plus infinity we have f t e i alpha t and d t and this is again with this factor this is the Fourier transform of f. So, we have e i alpha a and Fourier transform of f x. Now, the third property we have uh, the translation property translation property And in this case, the Fourier transform of a i i a x f x will be translated to its Fourier transform. So, for alpha will be alpha plus a. Proof is very simple. So, Fourier transform of i a x f x as per the definition we have 1 over a square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity e i a x e i alpha x f x d x. So, this is our function and this is for the transform now i alpha x for the transform. So, now minus infinity to plus infinity and we combine these two. So, i and then we have uh, a plus alpha and x we have f x d x and if you just see the definition of the Fourier transform, this is exactly f hat and if we replace this alpha by a plus alpha here. So, now the next property we have the Fourier and the most important uh, which will be used for the uh, application. So, Fourier transform of the derivative. of the derivatives. So, in this case if we have to have some assumptions here that f x is continuously differentiable. So, the derivative is also continuous and f x approaches to 0 as mod x approaches to infinity then. So, this ensures all the uh, existence of this Fourier and Fourier uh, derivative of this Fourier. So, then we have the Fourier transform of f prime x will be minus i alpha and the Fourier transform of f x. So, we go for the proof now of this property. So, Fourier transform of f x will be 1 over square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity. We have E i alpha x and this derivative of f with respect to x. So, we integrate by parts. So, square root 2 pi and we have this integral of this f x and e i alpha x minus infinity to plus infinity minus again and we have f x e i alpha x and i alpha the derivative of this and d x. So, as this x approaches to plus infinity or minus infinity as per our assumption this f x goes to 0. So, this term will vanish and then we have here minus i alpha and this 1 over square root 2 pi with this uh, minus infinity plus infinity f x e i alpha x d x will be the Fourier transform of f. So, if we have the generalized version of this. So, if f x is continuously n times n times differentiable and the derivative of this x approaches to 0 as x 
approaches to plus infinity or minus infinity for k 1 2 and n minus 1 and also for 0. So, the f x itself uh, so should go to 0 as x approaches to infinity. In that case, the Fourier transform of f n x f n x will be minus i alpha and we get here n we get n and f f x. So, this is the general result normally we will be using for the second derivative while solving p d. So, for a transform of the double derivative will be this minus i alpha square. So, minus alpha square and for a transform of f x. Then we have now the uh, convolution property. So, this theorem says that for a transform of the convolution of f and g will be square root 2 pi and f of f and the Fourier transform of g. So, here this convolution is defined as so f star g is minus infinity to plus infinity that is the our range we are working and then this convolution f y and g x minus y uh, d y. So, this is the convolution of uh, f star g x. So, now we give, go for the proof of this. So, the Fourier transform of this f star g or this convolution by the definition we have 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity f star g and e i alpha x d x. So, this is 1 over square root 2 pi and we have minus infinity to plus infinity again this convolution we have minus infinity to plus infinity f y and g x minus y d y e i alpha x and d x. Now, we change the order of integration to simplify this change the order of integration then we will get 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity. So, we assume that uh, this is uh, uh, possible here to change this order of integration without going into the detail and we have this f y g x minus y e i alpha x and d x d y and we now substitute this x minus y to a new variable t such that we have d x to d t. So, now we get uh, 1 over square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity f y as it is and g this x minus y is now t and we have e i alpha and there was a x. So, that is y plus t and we have d x is d t now and d y. So, we have substituted this and now uh, what we see that we multiply this 1 over, over square root 2 pi to get 1 over square root 2 pi once again. So, once this is sitting here anyway that is coming minus infinity to plus infinity and we have multiplied. So, we will also divide here. So, first we collect for the y which is independent of the inner integral. So, f y and e i alpha y from here and then we put that 1 over square root 2 pi here. We have the inner integral or with respect to t. So, g t and e i alpha t from here and we have d t and then we have d y. So, this one that is the uh, Fourier transform of, of g. So, we have a square root 2 pi. So, that is the Fourier transform of, of g and then the remaining one f y e i alpha y d y that is the Fourier transform with this that is the Fourier transform of 
f. So, what we have here f at alpha and g hat alpha or we can write in this operator form that the Fourier transform of f and uh, multiplied by the Fourier transform of, of this g and this was the Fourier transform of f star g. So, this is the convolution uh, theorem uh, we have and now we go for uh, one more important result that is called the Parseval uh, identity. So, Parseval's identity for for your transform Parseval identity. So, there are basically two identities one is generalized and one is a particular case of that. So, we have f hat alpha and g hat alpha with complex conjugate. If we integrate this with respect to alpha this is minus infinity to plus infinity f alpha and g x complex conjugate and the second identity that is just a particular case of this and this f hat alpha square d alpha minus infinity to plus infinity we have f x and d x. So, we go for the proof for the first one. So, we start with this. So, minus infinity to plus infinity and f x g this complex conjugate uh, d x and minus infinity to plus infinity and we have this f x and then this by inverse uh, transform we have 1 over a square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity. So, the inverse transform of this uh, g we are writing the, the transform was g hat uh, alpha g hat alpha and e minus i alpha x uh, d alpha and d x and this complex conjugate of this term. So, we have minus infinity to plus infinity f x multiplied by so 1 over this factor square root 2 pi we have minus infinity to plus infinity and this will be g hat alpha complex conjugate and complex conjugate of this which is e i alpha x d alpha d x and now we can change the order of integration. In this case then we will get so minus infinity to plus infinity minus infinity to plus infinity 1 over this is square root 2 pi we have f x we have g hat alpha and uh, we have this e i alpha x uh, what else we have then d x and we have d alpha. So, this 1 over square root pi f x uh, e i alpha x with this d x will give us again the Fourier transform of f. So, this is the Fourier transform of f and we have already this Fourier transform of, of g with this con conjugate and d alpha. So, the first result is, is proved and for the second one that is just a, a particular case. So, if we take this f and g uh, same function then we will get the second result. So, taking f x is equal to g x what we will obtain minus infinity to plus infinity f x and f x bar d x and minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha and f hat alpha complex conjugate and this is we can also write this f x whole square and minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha i square d alpha. So, now we have reviewed some uh, properties of this Fourier transform. 
So we go for some uh, interesting examples before we go for the real application. So the example find Fourier transform of exponential minus e x square. So, for the solution we have Fourier of exponential minus a x square and thus by the definition 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity and e i alpha x and the function e minus a x square d x 1 over 2 pi 1 over 2 pi and we have minus infinity to plus infinity e power we uh, combine these two minus a and we have then x square and minus so here i alpha over a i alpha over a and this x yes and then dx. So, now we have 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity and e minus we try to put here in a whole is, uh, the complete square form. So, we have x minus i alpha over 2 a and whole square then what you will get x square and this plus square of this term is extra here. So, we will compensate that, but we have this two times the multiplication of this and this is uh, x i alpha over a. So, that term is here. So, what additional term we have here? The square of this. So, that is i square alpha square 2 a square. So, we have i square is minus 1. So, alpha square over 2 a and minus was here. So, we have plus alpha square over over 4 a because the 2 a whole square. So, with this uh, 1 a square uh, is cancelled. So, we have here the extra term e power uh, plus uh, alpha square over 4 a. So, then we have to subtract that alpha square over 4 a and d x. Now, we can substitute this uh, so, that we have here whole square. So, square root a and x minus i alpha over 2 a we put it as y. So, that we have d x is d y over square root a. So, if we do that what uh, what is our uh, Fourier transform of e minus uh, a x square is 1 over square root 2 pi and we have minus infinity to plus infinity. So, this is e power minus y square and this e minus alpha square over 4 a it is it is and this d y over square root a. So, this is 1 over so here minus infinity to plus infinity e minus y square d y that is a Gaussian integral and the value is square root pi. So, that will be cancelled with this. So, this is uh, anyway constant we have taken out of this integral now we can take this. So, 1 over square root 2 and the square root a is here and e power minus alpha square over 4 a. So, this square root pi gets cancelled with this integral minus infinity to plus infinity e minus y square d y value of that integral is, is square root pi. So, here we had 1 square root pi. So, this is cancelled. So, this is the Fourier transform of e minus a x square. Now, just to note that that if we take a is equal to half here. So, taking a is equal to half what will be the result e power minus x square by 2 will be a is half. So, uh, this term is gone now. So, e power minus alpha square over 2 e power minus alpha square by 2. So, what we this shows that Fourier transform of e um, 
or in general Fourier transform of this f x. So, Fourier transform of e power minus x square by 2 is just e power minus alpha square by 2. So, we replace just x by alpha. So, this is f alpha. It's interesting and such functions functions or such function which hold where this property holds is said to be is said to be self reciprocal self reciprocal under Fourier transform under Fourier transformation. Okay, so this function e power minus x square is self uh, reciprocal under this Fourier uh, transformation. Take another example now. Find the Fourier transform. Fourier transform of f t e minus a and absolute value of this t, t is minus infinity to plus infinity. So, the solution e minus a t as per the definition we have 1 over square root 2 pi and we uh, break that integral minus infinity to plus infinity into two parts. So, minus infinity to, to 0 and we have e power um, this modulus or absolute value of t in this range we can replace by minus t. So, we have a t e i alpha t and d t plus then 0 to infinity and this will be e power minus the absolute value of t will be just t e power minus a t e i alpha t and d t. So, what we have 1 over square root 2 pi and uh, again I can just write this. So, it is e power a plus i alpha t d t plus 0 to infinity e power minus a plus i alpha t uh, d t. Now, we can integrate this. So, 1 over square root 2 pi. So, e power a plus i alpha t over a plus i alpha minus infinity to 0 plus e minus a plus i alpha over minus a plus i alpha and 0 to infinity. So, 1 over square root 2 pi and this when we put 0 we get 1 over a plus i alpha minus infinity this term will go to 0 and similarly when we put uh, this t approaches to infinity this uh, term will go to 0 because we have e power minus a t and multiplied by e power i alpha t. So, that, that is bounded and e power minus uh, a t for the same reason what we have here this will approach to, to 0 and we have minus uh, 1 over a plus i alpha. minus a plus i alpha. Okay, so, 1 over square root 2 pi and then we have uh, this the common factor here a plus i alpha and uh, we take a minus i alpha. So, that here is plus. So, that will be a square plus alpha square and here a minus i alpha then this will be plus a and plus i alpha. So, this will be cancelled and we have 2 a over square root 2 pi square root 2 pi and a square plus alpha square. So, that is the result. Okay. So, the next example we have Fourier transform of Dirac delta function. We have introduced this function already 
uh, while discussing the Laplace transform. So, just to recall it was the delta t minus a and we considered this as a limit of this delta epsilon function. So, just remember this delta epsilon t minus a was 0 and 1 over epsilon and again 0 when t is less than a and when t is between a and a plus epsilon and when t greater than again a plus epsilon it is 0. So, with this definition we have seen that this minus infinity to plus infinity f x delta x minus a d x is f a and with this definition we can easily get this uh, Fourier transform of this delta Dirac delta function which will be 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity with this definition t minus a e i alpha t and d t. So, this will give us the function value. So, that is e power i alpha a. So, 1 over square root 2 pi and e i alpha a. In particular, in particular we have when a is 0. So, the Fourier transform of delta t is simply 1 over square root 2 pi because a is 0. So, this is 1 or this also implies that the Fourier inverse if we take of this 1. So, take the Fourier inverse both side. So, this will be square root 2 pi go to that side and the delta t. So, this also a result we will use. We have uh, two more uh, uh, special examples where we will evaluate some uh, special integrals and the first example in this category find the Fourier transform of f x defined by f x 1 and 0 when x is less than a and when x is greater than a and hence evaluate evaluate the integral minus infinity to plus infinity sin alpha a cos alpha x over alpha d alpha and also 0 to infinity sin alpha over alpha d alpha. So, for the solution, so we have found Fourier of this f x f x is defined between minus a and a. So, 1 over a square root 2 phi outside that it is a 0. So, 1 over square root 2 phi minus infinity to plus infinity e i alpha x and we have f x d x. So, 1 over a square root 2 phi and this is from minus a to a outside this uh, interval this f x is 0. So, in this range it is 1. So, we have i alpha x and d x. So, it is simple now 2 pi and this is e i alpha x over i alpha and our limit minus a to a. So, what we have then 1 over square root 2 pi 1 over i alpha and e i alpha a minus e minus i alpha a and with this uh, i factor and we can uh, have already this i we can multiply and divide by 2. So, to get this so 2 over e square root 2 pi and this will be sin alpha a over alpha and this is our Fourier transform of this function for the given function. Okay, now we go for this uh, evaluation of this integral. We have two integrals there, and always uh, we have such integrals, and we can take this uh, Fourier inverse transform. 
and this factor will sit then inside the integral and that we know already that this is f x is equal to that integral. So, we can get the value. So, we know now for the from the inverse Fourier transform that f x is 1 over a square root 2 pi and minus infinity to plus infinity f hat alpha e minus i alpha x uh, d alpha. At this point uh, of this continuity we have uh, this equality holds and otherwise we have the average value in any case. So, what we have now 1 over square root 2 pi and this integral minus infinity to plus infinity f this alpha was 2 over square root 2 pi and sin alpha a over alpha and e minus i alpha x d alpha as f x. So, what we have now this square root 2 pi square root 2 pi will be and this 2 we can cancel. So, we have 1 over pi that will go to the right side of this integral. So, we have minus infinity to plus infinity and this uh, sin alpha a and this is cos alpha x minus i sin alpha x over this alpha and d alpha this is equal to pi and this f x and we know already that this f x is is 1 when x is uh, uh, mod x is less than a. So, this will give us pi simply when mod x is less than a and this will be 0 when this absolute value of x is greater than a. Now, we equate the real part so, we get minus infinity to plus infinity and sin alpha a cos alpha x over alpha d alpha and the value of this integral is pi and 0 if x less than a and if x greater than a. So, that was the one part of the question for the second one for the second one we need to have this sin alpha over alpha sin alpha over alpha. So, what we do in this case that x if we put 0. So, take this x to 0. If we take this x 0 and let us take this a 1. So, a 1 and x 0. So, we the value would be pi of that integral. So, what will be the integral now minus infinity to plus infinity and this a is 1. So, we have sin alpha over alpha and cos 0 will be 1. So, this d alpha and the value now because this mod x is less than uh, mod uh, less than a. So, this value will be just pi. So, this integral we have evaluated. Similarly, the very last example we go through quickly. So, if we have the f x 1 minus x square and 0 mod x is less than 1 and mod x is greater than 1 it is 0 and in this case we can evaluate such an integral. So, evaluate 0 to infinity minus x cos x plus sin x over x cube d x. So, we take the Fourier transform of this f x 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity to plus infinity e i alpha x f x d x. So, we have 1 over square root 2 pi and minus 1 to 1 because outside this uh, the f x is 0 e i alpha x and then we have 1 minus x square d x. So, 1 over square root 2 pi and this uh, we can integrate uh, and we will get at the end. So, I am writing just uh, directly 
the value. So, we will get 4 over alpha cube and minus alpha cos alpha plus sin alpha and this is f at alpha and we know again from the Fourier inverse transform again from the Fourier inverse transform that f x is 1 over square root 2 pi minus infinity root plus infinity and this function e minus i alpha x d alpha. So, we substitute here and again come uh, take the real part. So, equating real part equating real part we will get minus infinity to plus infinity minus alpha cos alpha plus sin alpha over alpha q and cos alpha x d alpha and the value would be pi by 2 f x and this is pi by 2 and value of the f x we have 1 minus x is square if mod x is less than 1 and this is 0 if mod x is greater than 1. So, if we put here the x is equal to 0. So, in, in that case, so this cos 0 will be 1 and we have minus infinity to plus infinity minus alpha cos alpha plus sin alpha over this alpha cube and d alpha and when x is 0. So, it is less than 1. So, the value is pi by 2 and this is if we see this is the uh, uh, even in integral. So, if we put alpha to minus alpha we will get uh, the same value because here we will get minus minus and then minus here. So, the, this is the odd fun, uh, even function. So, we have 2 times the 0 to infinity and minus alpha cos alpha plus sin alpha over alpha cube and d alpha the value is pi by 4 because 2 will go to this side and we have pi by 4. So, today we have uh, discussed this Fourier transform with the help of various examples and in the next lecture we will go for the, the application to partial differential equations. So, uh, and we will consider three different kind of partial differential equations as in the case of Laplace transform. So, then uh, to for today's that is enough and thank you.